I'm Steve Adubato. It's our pleasure to welcome, for the first time on our set, uh, Bill Sproul, who is Assistant Executive Secretary Treasurer Keystone Mountain Lakes Regional Council of Carpenters. Good to see you, Bill. Good to see you, Steve. Describe Thank the organization. You. Well, Keystone Mountain Lakes Regional Council of Carpenters is a seven-state regional council of carpenters. We're approximately 45,000 members, just shy of that. Uh, we have everything from carpenters that do heavy construction foundation up to floor layers and finished carpenters. I think uh, our trade is one of the best kept secrets out there as far as the diversity of mm. what carpenters actually do on construction sites. What states? Uh, our states are New Jersey, uh, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, District of Columbia, mm. Virginia, West Virginia, and actually I got to throw in 10 counties in Northern Carolina and uh, three counties in Ohio as part of our regional council. Good stuff. I'm curious about this from a, I don't want to say from a policy perspective, but I was reading in preparation for this about underground construction, the underground construction economy. What is it and why does it matter so much, not just to your members, but to the overall economy? I think that uh, it's kind of something that the average public people don't understand what's going on in the construction industry, but we, we refer to it now as tax fraud or payroll fraud in the construction industry. And That's a big word. Why fraud? Because contractors are out there operating unscrupulously. Uh, they, they go ahead and they get big contracts for projects, private not so much as public projects, but mostly in the private sector. And they're two, three, four million dollar contracts, sometimes even higher than that. They're getting workers that they're actually exploiting by having them do the work for low wages, little or no benefits, most of the time no benefits. Uh, most Are they non-union? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's open shop. Non-union is where this occurs because there's no collective bargaining agreements there to protect the workers. And what's happening is they estimate, the economists estimate, that this is a $60 billion a year issue what in about the, the United taxes? States. Are we getting the taxes? No, sir. How, how is the, the f hold on one second. Social Security, you know, taking out FICA, right? Taxes, federal taxes. Not coming out? The, on these particular jobs, and, and our teams have gone out and investigated this stuff and, and submitted uh, complaints to the Department of Labor, whether it's a state agency or their federal agency. And by the way, state taxes paid or not? No, sir. No. Unemployment disability doesn't get paid. And, you know, what happens is the developers on these projects where they decide to utilize this type of a workforce have a choice. They, they can either go with legitimate contractors or they can try to get their numbers down and whittle the price down. And when they bring in unscrupulous contractors like this, everybody loses because the contractors aren't paying taxes, the workers are being exploited. Uh, workman's compensation is literally non-existent for the workers on Somebody that job. Somebody gets hurt on a job, what happens? They'll drop them off at the hospital. Why isn't there more attention or focus on this bill? I think that it's become a problem in New Jersey probably over the last 10 to 15 years. Um, with the housing bubble that occurred in the Great Recession, um, the workforce in our particular state has kind of grown with this respect. Stockton Hughes Center for Public Policy did a study a couple of years ago on the- Down at Stockton uh, University. Uh, down at Stockton, yes, sir. And uh, they estimated that there's about 35,000 workers working off the books in New Jersey in the construction industry. And that equates to about anywhere between 540 to $1.2 billion in wages that do not touch any kind of uh, taxes or do not come into the system. It's, it's basically the underground economy. And those estimates are very modest and conservative. I mentioned the $60 billion number nationally. Um, there are states that have predominantly open shop construction, uh, right to work for less, as we call it. And, and construction workers in some of those states uh, predominantly work this way, mm. and the poverty levels in the construction industry are, are much, much higher. Let, let me ask you this, but we've had a lot of offline conversations to, to disclose. Uh, your organization is an underwriter of, of the work that we do, particularly in the area of public policy-oriented programming. I'm curious about this. Do you think that in the minds of some, particularly in political positions, that unions like yours are targets? And if so, targets of what? 
it's a very uh, intense environment down in Washington right now, and I think you've got a lot of people that look at unions as uh, something that uh, you're the enemy. That we're the enemy, basically. They, they, Where do you think that comes from? I think that comes from a. Uh, uh, business perspective where corporations and, and companies and, and very wealthy people uh, are trying to get more dollars out of their investments and not really considering the average working people and, and don't really care too much about the middle class in this country. How's the president been on this, President Trump? I don't think he's been very proactive on this issue. Well, he talks it, about the working man and woman. Often it's talking about working men, but I believe he means both genders. That he's a champion of the working man and or woman, you say? I, I would say that uh, what's happening down in, in uh, D.C. right now with regards to things that are happening with the president and, and some of the Supreme Court nominees and things of that nature that are going on, that everything is, seems to be building up as negative to the working people. We're, we're going to have some difficult times ahead. Uh, with regards to the middle class and trying to bring mm. more people and elevate more people into the middle class with some of the things sure. that have been going on down Let's there. talk diversity and inclusion. Uh, you have an initiative, I think it's called Sisters in the Brotherhood. What is that, A and B? Talk okay. to us about immigration in this regard. Sisters in the Brotherhood is a an organization within our organization that uh, we have a group of women in the north, or actually in the Keystone Mountain Lakes Regional Council of Carpenters that uh, help recruit other women into the construction industry. And it's been very successful here in New Jersey. It's being expanded into other areas throughout our regional council, cities such as Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, DC. And it allows uh, ladies to come into a non-traditional setting and actually have a career path in the mm -hmm. construction industry if they so choose. And our, it's our opening numbers, doors. it is opening a lot of doors for <clears throat> folks. Yes, sir. Immigration, minute left. Anti-immigration, if I put it this way. There are folks in this country who believe, obviously, we need to change and improve immigration policy. Open, big question, I know. But those who are shut down the borders, nobody in, you say? I say that there's 12 to 15 million people already here working amongst us. And... Uh, Shutting down the borders is, is not the answer. Aren't you afraid of losing some of the jobs for your men and women? We, we're actually bringing in a lot of immigrants uh, into our ranks, into our unions. When you look at the demographic in the construction industry right now, uh, it used to be Irish, Italian, Germans that came into the trade many years ago. Now uh, there, there is a lot of Latino workers in the industry, whether it's residential or commercial. And a lot of those, uh, a lot of those folks are coming and joining our ranks. What's difficult is the people that don't have the citizen's uh, status right now, the tax ID number people and the people that have to somehow work in the up. shadows. That has to be tightened up. And uh, we advocate for that to happen. We're actually thinking about looking seconds, into uh, having a law firm that maybe could help represent some of our members and their citizenship issues to try to get them help so that they can become uh, working citizens of the country. Bill, appreciate you joining us. All the best to the men and women in your organization. Thank you, Steve. Well Thank said. you very much. We'll be right back right after this. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the Russell Berry Foundation, Summit Medical Group, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, St. Joseph's Health, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, New Jersey Resources, and by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.